good taste, but by anyone's judgment, they would have to be considered clever. The purpose of today's show is to gain a better understanding of a very controversial subject, and that is cold fusion. Some believe this topic is dead. However, my guest, Dr. Eugene Malov, will not let it die. He believes passionately in the viability of cold fusion. In the simplest terms, cold fusion uses water to produce energy at room temperature. Some things we're going to look at today are why cold fusion has not been embraced by the scientific community, the politics involved, and what the implications would be if cold fusion were proven scientifically. Uh, I'm Dr. Eugene Malov, and I'm the editor-in-chief of Infinite Energy magazine, uh, Cold Fusion and New Energy Technologies. Uh, also, I'm the director of the New Energy Research Laboratory, which is part of Infinite Energy magazine. Uh, the actual corporation in the state of New Hampshire, right near Concord, is uh, called Cold Fusion Technology Incorporated. So there was an amazing announcement at the University of Utah in 1989, on March 23rd, uh, just before the Exxon Valdez ran aground, ironically. Doctors Pons and Fleischmann at the University of Utah announced that they had a little cell which was using a, a special form of water that's in all water. It's in fact called heavy water. Uh, one out of every 6,500 water molecules is heavy. Okay, it has heavy hydrogen in it. And they said, look, we pass a current through this cell, and it has palladium electrodes and palladium electrode and a, uh, another electrode pass electricity tr through it. They said, we get much more heat out of this cell than can be accounted for by any known ordinary chemical reaction. It must be nuclear, and we believe it may be fusion, akin to what is going on inside the stars, but not with lethal radiation. Cold fusion does not produce in its ideal form, which is essentially what would be in commercial units that we know are going to be produced soon. Uh, these units will have no radiation, okay? And that can be tested for, assured for, and it is basically the cleanest form of energy imaginable, and it is infinite for all practical purposes. What we really had was a threat to the scientific establishment. Uh, even if it were perceived as it was then and even today as a, a bogus discovery, not a real discovery, not, a, not good science, bad science, false data, uh, even though that was and is on the minds of the hot fusion physicists today and high energy physicists, the threat of it even being implied as real and having uh, monies, shall we say, being diverted from their favored programs, and uh, that was a threat, no question. There was an actual threat of that happening. And here, two chemists were coming along telling them, oh, by the way, uh, we found a, a perfectly good way of doing this. We only spent $100,000 of our own money, and uh, we can do it in a jar, and we think it can be scaled up. That was extremely threatening to the hot fusion people. We know for a fact today that the cold fusion, low energy nuclear reactions are real. It's a class of reactions of nuclear and the nuclear, non-dangerous uh, um, reactions producing dominantly heat but also nuclear changes. Very beneficial type of powerful reaction. Uh, that is a commercially emerging technology in the hands of a number of companies. It's difficult technology but it will, under the proper circumstances of proper patenting and money and what have you, it will emerge as a, as a universal energy source. Malov's combative stance against what he saw as the hypocrisy of mainstream science gave him a high profile, and his book, Fire From Ice, claimed that his team produced a greater than unity output energy in an experiment that was successfully replicated on several occasions. Malov claims that the results were suppressed through an organized campaign of ridicule from mainstream physicists. On May 14, 2004, Eugene Malov was found murdered outside of his recently vacated rental property in Norwich, Connecticut. Due to the nature of Malov's work, this stemmed several conspiracy theories regarding his homicide, raising the question of how close he actually was about achieving free energy and exposing his findings to the world. To date, there has only been three arrests in connection to his murder. With all of Dr. Malov's accomplishments and the scientific community, one has to raise the question of whether or not his murder was just a senseless killing 
or something much more than that. Whether it is a case of silencing a whistleblower or not, we will never really know, leaving us with unfinished and unpublished research that may never see the light of day. And I was stunned. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. It looked like monkey business to me at the time, and it has turned out to be exactly that. Yes, there, there is serious criminal activity going on that ultimately must be rooted out with the coal fusion new energy revolution, at least as far as hydrogen energy, uh, that is advanced hydrogen, anomalous physics energy is concerned. Former chief science writer for MIT, engineer Dr. Eugene Maloff, has assembled the evidence that takes the illusion out of cold fusion. When I finished my book, Fire from Ice, in 1991, I concluded that the evidence for cold fusion was overwhelmingly compelling. Today, we can no longer say that the evidence is overwhelmingly compelling. It is now 100% certain.